Hello, Mute. And all to the Nerd Show. Perfect. Thank you very much. So happy to be here. How are you doing? Absolutely wonderful. Excited. Amazing. Amazing. So for those who don't know you, how would you introduce yourself? Hello. This is Mihir Akulkar. I'm an ex-professional tennis player and a serial entrepreneur trying to be one by founding and co-founding a few companies in India, Europe and US. So that pretty much sums up what he does. So you used to be a tennis player before. Absolutely, yes. But now you... do business right can so what were the highs because you started off with tennis right and that's still a big part in your business life absolutely so what were the highs and lows of your tennis career oh now we start off so basically i started playing tennis out of my mom's uh, curiosity that after school instead of going out and playing around with the kids you know why don't you join a sport basically yeah. that's how i started my tennis journey yeah and very soon and became a passion very soon i started liking it everything so i used to go to a nearby club So it was like maybe five, ten, fifteen minutes away from my house. Okay, so I used to go there daily for one hour, you know, for school hours in the evening, like how everybody just goes joining as well. That's how we started. Very quickly, I could, uh, you know, uh, see that uh, there's a lot of uh, liking. I was getting more and more inclined towards the sport and everything. Yeah, and uh, that's when I started doing good, and the coaches said that okay, there's a potential and everything. So um, I started playing tournaments. I started at the age of ten. So I started playing under twelve, under fourteen, and uh, you know those tournaments. Started seeing the results. The results were good. Then from moving to my club where I started playing tennis, and I moved to a bigger club, okay. which was an hour's drive from where I used to live, okay. basically. And then I started my then I started focusing on more tennis, more hours to tennis. From so one hour, I started doing these to two and a half hours. Fitness came into the picture. So that time, so my basically my mornings from seven to nine thirty. Was about tennis. Okay. Then ten to eleven thirty was completely into fitness, and because it was in one hour drive from where I used to live, you know, take shower, breakfast, post tennis and fitness, twelve thirty school to again drive back to school when you go. What age were you in that time? Ah, uh, I think I started. So I was in. I was ten years old. So probably uh, we call it fifth or something. Yeah, more or less around that time. So when did you professionally start playing? Like on a National or global level? When did you? So this journey happened when I shifted from my local club and I started going for that, like you know, to the yeah. bigger ones. That's when that good tournaments and I was also growing up. So one to twelve, one to fourteen, and the sixteen. So I started getting good state ranking. I was playing national tournaments and everything. And even and during the course of this club only, the club selected few players. Okay. And they took us to Spain. Okay. And the best part about this journey is my mom never sent me even for a school picnic. Basically, her relationship. So, so from not going to school picnic to directly getting selected for an international trip, that to me no parents are allowed. Yeah, you know, you go with a group of kids and your coach. Okay. So it cool. was a very mixed emotions. I was super happy, super excited of what was happening, and at the same time, you know, mom is like, you know, she's standing my coach. She has never been alone. Do you think I need to come? This, that, no. So that was the biggest barrier that got broken during that time. And when I went to Spain, that's when I understood what real tennis is. How, if you want to make it professionally, how these guys train? They don't put just four, five hours. They put more than that. They, you know, like day to day. And you have that's all they do. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that that is not possible. Exactly. Or better, you know. So that was the whole psychology. It was just one month of training. But in one month, that was the routine. So we used to wake up at six. Training used to start at eight thirty. Eight thirty for the first half. We used to go into tennis, and you know, then we used to go into fitness. Then it was lunch. Post lunch, it was all about uh, you know, match sessions. That is the evening. So basically, you you compete. Okay. So in the morning, you train, you do your fitness, you do your practice and everything, drills and all. And in the evening time, it was a match match. So the muscle memory, so the muscle memory and everything is like fresh. In your own sleep, mind and body, as you play, absolutely, and go right up. Whatever you executed in the morning, whatever you learn, now you have an opportunity to execute in a match. Perfect. That that's that's a good strategy. And that's how the professional journey got more than you know, got more and more deeper, and then started playing international tournaments. Okay. So I also remember my first tournament in Spain, and I remember it was a three-setter match. Okay, so I won the first set, then I lost the another one, the okay. second set, and then I won the third set. So that match is always going to be a memorable one because the first time I played with the foreigner, Tom, it was my first international trip. The first okay. time being around in that world environment, your first international tournament Spain. in Spain. Okay, okay, and that's when I got introduced, and then I came back again because we used to only go for one month. Again, come back, 
And boss, after that, was never like, you know, I'm not going to just stay in for two, two hours. So I want to make it professionally. I saw where the world competes. You, yeah. you saw like what it really is, like in its flesh and blood, Absolutely. what tennis really is. Absolutely. Because I was thinking what I was, what I was playing in India, I was like, oh boss, my first, uh, you know, first half is, you know, I'm giving it for tennis. Afternoon is school and what yeah. things. But you thought, then I got to know this is just 30% of the day for the big players and the professionals, what they're doing. So before it was just like as a hobby, but then it became your life. Absolutely, absolutely. And this club giving me the exposure, my coach, Mr. Manoj, right, they're giving me that international exposure, changed the whole fall game. And then I knew if you want to make your career into anything, sports, business, whatever, you have to become that thing. So when you were joining the big club, did you know that there would be international travels or that you would even join in professionally or did you just join it like it's a bigger club, there'll be better tennis playing over there? Thing was, my local club coach, he said he has, uh, you know, potential. It's better he will be able to get players of his caliber, basically. So I would be able to compete with, you know, the guys who can match the level or, you know, play in the same or, or the higher ones, correct, basically. So once you dominate your own club, it's saying, you know, you feel you're the king of the this thing, but when you actually go into the, you know, the industry or like this, the, the real game, then, you know, you don't even stand anywhere. Because when, when you're like, too good for your own level, then they put you in another level and it takes time to get used to that also. Absolutely, and that's when you also, you know, you break your mental balance. Right, right. Because there's lots to learn, there's so much to do, you know, and there's so much to put in, you know, this is not enough, you know. Right. That mindset comes into the picture. So that push comes in. So that mindset has helped you in other aspects of your life as well, right? Tennis has shaped who I am today. Okay, so that's one big part of what the next question would have been. Okay. That there are many entrepreneurs, many starting out and people who are starting out people who have been in the industry for like 20 30 years but not everyone reaches a very high level as you have right so yeah. you would credit most of that to tennis right absolutely so absolutely. if someone were to ask you i know it's cliche and all that but what was your secret to being this successful as an entrepreneur because not everyone gets this chance so i'll see there is still a long mile to go into to be in the theory of the players that you know where Elon Musk and all these big names is and that's the vision that's the goal and multiple you know climbing the ladder is out to me where I am today it's all because of tennis the mindset because see in tennis when you play any sport when you compete at an international level what do you learn what do you have to learn is to forgive yourself forgive yourself and what I mean by that is, you know, you, you, you have an amazing practice, you have an amazing training sessions, then you play your matches, you compete with players. There are times when you win against a guy who you never thought you would win. Exactly. And then there are times when you lose against a player you never thought you would lose against. Okay. And the best part is tennis, the highs and lows, you know, going back to the first question or the like, you know, the highs and lows that we, that we go into, basically, mm-hmm. the biggest advantage of that highs and lows is, uh, you know, it gives you an opportunity to, you know, just see where things are going. You know, and tennis is highs and lows every single day. Okay. Because you win in the morning, you lose in the evening. So it, it gave you like, it's like, um, it's like preparing for an exam in your school. They give you super hard, like, by the impossible, level. but then in the test, the, the answers are like regular. They're not impossible. Absolutely, absolutely. But because you've already done those crunching, hard questions, now you know what it is like. Your, your muscles are a little bit loose. Absolutely. Figuratively. Absolutely. So then it becomes better, really. So if I were to play a one-on-one match in tennis, would you still have the same amount of... Yes. You would? Yeah. So it stays with you, right? Of course it stays with you. You cannot... So it becomes your lifestyle because you have given yourself to that. You know, 100%. You have given yourself to that and that's what makes a lot of difference. Or basically, because without that, it's just, uh, you know, completely impossible yeah, yeah. To, to reach at that particular level and, you know, just get things done. Yeah, what needed to be now. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So that's a very, uh, very important, uh, you know, aspect. And that's what tennis taught. And because of this mindset that, you know, you cannot be, you know, you have to move on. You can, I cannot even stick to the point before. Okay. You know, because if we say, for example, you and me are competing, we are players, you know, we are competing at a professional level. Now we had a big 20, 30 shots random. Yeah. And I ended up losing that. Huh. And for the 20, 30 shots, I gave my all. Every point I gave my all. Like, for example, yeah. exactly. Now for the 20, 30 shots, a big rally and I lost. I For the next point, I have to be mentally ready. Okay. It cannot be that I'm changing on to that point. Oh, 30 shots, I gave myself all and I lost yeah. a point. Or I lost a game or I lost a set. So that mindset of not losing and that helped me a lot in business. That helped me a lot in 
having varied like you know having verticals or verticals in different industry and have that companies any in different countries because it was never like uh, you know one go so more than more than like handling one business because you were like now i lost but there's another match so i can't rule over that so i have to go to think this helped you with managing multiple businesses ki ek business ka acha nahi chal raha doesn't mean i jeopardize the other business ka work also like when you are when you are into sports yeah so one mindset you need to have is that never give up never give up right and i was always there because the match is never over until you've shaken hands thank you and you let and never give ne, saying never give up is like it's easier said than done everyone says it but then implying that to your life is like a another whole level and because of the tennis background i had no option but to have that mindset okay became my core psychology because when you're in the game you can't don't have time to think over things and you still be not think it done i was winning i was 40 love up say for example on serve yeah. 40 love up i lost the game i can't be clinch on i just i cannot even clinch to the previous point so i have to be fresh and new okay this point now now so not being in the now so drain your decision making also now then absolutely okay so that that's that's probably your biggest secret to tennis and you and most people wouldn't exactly um, expect this combination that oh because i played tennis now it's going to help me in my business but if you look at it today the sportsmanship uh, in my last interview with rishab sharma it was the same thing he's a he does kickboxing So I was like, yeah, dude, that that same mindset plays into your career, and it takes you to another level, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. So that's destiny. That's another thing, you know, yeah. as things go, because yeah. tennis and business, then business, and after that is like a combination. Zara logo ke baas hota nahi hai, but you were fortunate enough for that to this year. So that definitely helps. Yeah. And as far as I know, you're a big ambassador of accepting things the way they are and going with the flow, right? As I said, there was no option. when you're into a professional like you know competing you know in a in such a individual sport see it's an individual sport so you have to judge yourself every mode you cannot i can i and, and initially it was like i lost because the other guy was good i won because you know i was superior than him and all this so which is a general general terminology when i saying right when i got deeper into the profession of tennis and you know, started competing saw the international level of com- like competitions and how the players are and how much they give in you know for the sport you know so that kind of gave an idea ki you know you know that gave a lot of idea that you know how things work can uh, you know what is what is that uh, one thing you know so it was never about um, what do you say it you know it was never about ki it's about me and him how i got to know it's about me and me it's me versus me you know it's never in between me and him and battling the leap was like that and battling with yourself is what takes you to another level right because if you battle with them exactly you are greater than them but you're not greater than what you were yesterday exactly but when you battle with yourself exactly. there's no option but to be greater yeah. and that mindset came by competing 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 and then once again uh, as an advice if you were to give to some person who's around my age as a teenager 16 year old who's like yeah everyone's telling me don't give up go with the flow but how would, how would a person exactly find a way to imply that in his real life because a person psychology is so that they say never give up yeah put those flags and the banners up in your room but when it comes to a real life situation giving up is like the most easiest thing you can do so most people end up doing that right. so how would you advise someone to a person like me to actually imply that those quotes in your life see ultimately you have to be honest to yourself yeah you know and the only way you can succeed in life is by being honest to yourself because if you yourself are not able to do things for yourself how do you expect you would put in for your company how do you expect you would do it for others for example you know so it has to start from you and it does come from within and whenever see energy works yeah you know energy your mind is anyways working so might as well channelize towards thing that is progressing for you and these are the biggest battles that you know people overcome you know and these and this is the only fight that you have to win the battle with it you know you would think no no this entire week i have you know i decided to get up at 5 i did get up at 5 and now today is sunday and you have to always understand one pause you know taken out of choice oh um, you know disrupts the entire flow i had of you that's it that's it that's it that so you have to know that you know you have to keep going you have to keep going it's more about being in conversation with yourself because the only person who yeah. can convince you to do anything If you're sad, and you do know. So, what was the first fire that you had? Why did you decided to get up at four? What was that day that you decided that today onwards I'm going to start gymming? 
Huh. What was that fire? You know, so you also always remember that fire. With the, you remember the reason you started. Exactly. And you have to every day tell yourself this was the reason. You know, and then of course, and there are going to be times when you will start with that decline, start with that decline. But over the period of, you know, starting, starting off, starting, and then, you know, again, declining. Then that psychology, nahi, there was one scenario that, you know, no, I saw something that inspired me and next time I'm off. Every day, every day, as if it's your first day. So the secret, if if I can summarize what you said, is consistency first of all. Yes. No breaks in the flow. No, yeah. no breaks. Yeah, no breaks in the flow. Yeah. Persistence. That Absolutely. even though there are highs and lows, yeah. you have to keep going despite the lows. You can't stop. Yeah. Right, just going because, yeah. And I think those two things would really help you out. Right? And 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 I think third of all, if I may add, exposure. Yes. The more exposure you get. The more you learn, and the next time you get exposed to it, you're like, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So you have to set your boundary. You set your own limits every day. Exactly. That's it. That's and then just a little bit more. And I'm telling you, and once you understand this psychology, you would know your fight is never up with the opponent. It's with yourself. That's it. And you win that it's always with yourself. And that's the battle everybody's struggling with. So whoever conquers this battle, conquers by default the rest of the battle. It becomes a byproduct. That's when success becomes a byproduct by default. It's something like in the school. Yeah, of course, it's all about the teacher teaching you. But if the student's not accepting anything, the student is only making himself lose, right? It's, because at the end of the day, it all comes down to you, no matter what. Absolutely. So in tennis, also, you see, everybody might have a coach. Everybody has rackets. The court is never going to change. It's going to be the same for you, for me. Correct, correct. Tennis boards are going to be the same for you and me. Rules are going to be the same for you and me. So what does it set, you know, what, what is that difference? Why there are few, uh, you know, counted in legends and few are not, you know? It's because they themselves iterate every day. They don't see what he's doing. They see what I'm doing. They see within and then they change things from within. And when you change things from within, every cell of your body starts, you know, making it happen for you. And it's also important to keep something like the North Star. Like the reason you started, that's your North Star. If to keep going because that thing's always going to stay in the same place. You have to keep going. This has it. And that's what kept you going on. What was your North Star? My thing was, you know, just to make it happen. Make yeah. it happen in terms of, you know, professional tennis, become a professional tennis player. Yeah. But as the time went by and everything, I started to realize, considering, you know, there were players younger than me, reaching to where I wanted to reach, you know. But then I didn't, I didn't, dis- I didn't get disappointed in that part. So what I said, what do I hold? I said, what do I have now? Yeah, basically, you know, I got to know that I have friends all over around the world because I, I was 14 when I first went to Spain. Oh, so that's when I started making friends because and that academy has people, players coming in from all over the world. Yeah. And then 2008 onwards, my international journey started. Yeah. 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, every year I went to Spain one with this club. Yeah. Then 2012 to 14, I moved to US. Okay. IMG Academy, Nick Bollitry is one of the, you know, legends in tennis coaching and everything. And IMG Academy is one of the biggest sports academies and universities you can be part of. Okay. So I became part of it for two years, basically. So I understood the European tennis, Indian tennis and the American tennis, basically, during that time. And then after considering all that, I again shifted my base to Spain. So until 2000, from 2008 to 2018 is being my tennis journey internationally. So is there a difference in Indian tennis, uh, American tennis, and Spanish tennis? Absolutely. You is different. What's the difference? The thing is, if you play in Spain, it's all clay courts, first of all. Clay courts. So there are different surfaces, uh, you know, oh. in tennis, there's Inanna, there's synthetic, there's clay courts. And Spanish tennis is all about returning that ball again. But one more time. Returning one more time. American tennis is like, finish it in one, two, three shots. Right. It's more about the... It's more about the aggressiveness. It's not like it's it's it's, a, it's it's and India is like what suits you, <laughs> you know. It's like that, you know. Let's see what happens. That's it. That's it. That's it. So Spanish is more like about the defense, like defend yourself. And American is about like aggressive, aggressive. To put it in simple words, yes. So Indian. So what is the difference between Indian court and uh, American courts? The courts are the same. It's just the you know with courts and everything. Then they really it doesn't matter. No, no, it's exactly the same. Exactly. There's no problem. Yeah. Maybe in the quality wise or anything that would differ, nothing more than that. Okay, okay. <laughs> You've achieved many great businesses, right? Yeah. And one of which is um, do whistle, right? If you talk about that's one thing. We will come to that later. But what is one business opportunity 
that really stands out from all the other business opportunities you ever got? Is there something that st- has stuck with you that you remember? Yeah. Our family business that we are into. What's that about? So it's about waterproofing, but not standard waterproofing. It's about technology-based waterproofing. Now, what I mean by that is waterproofing has been a standard business all these years. And whenever there's a leakage in someone's house or something, everybody thinks they have to break my bathroom. I have to break that. I have to break this. It's a nuisance, base, basically. So our family business, what we have into is that what we have developed, our IP, the biggest IP is to detect where the source of leakage is. And once you identify the source of leakage, that's like a pathology, you know. Next was we were very good in, you know, detecting the source of leakages. Now the thing was how do you fix it without leaking? Say, for example, we are sitting in this infrastructure and now say, for example, the water is dripping from the dock. What do standard waterproofing you have to do? You have to go to the upstairs house, you have to request them and they, and for that too, if they're friendly enough to let you in. You know, and accepting the fact that it is from their bathroom because ultimately they have to end up, you know, spending money. Right. So how do you overcome that? Basically, so that's when our proprietary things came into the picture that, you know, now how do we, what kind of, you know, things that we should develop, correct? you know, to make things, uh, you know, possible. That we could fix it from the negative side only without having to go upstairs. So you guys invented it? Yes. That's, that's our biggest IP in terms of detecting how to optimize the resources, the technology to reach where the source of leakages is and then fix it also without leak. So how does that device appear? Like how does it look? To, is that a device or is, what is it? It's a combination of multiple technologies that you can optimize. One is uh, thermal imaging, then there's ultrasound. But the best part over here, what we have is the experience of so many years. And this experience of so many years helped us, you know, interpret. See, Tethoscope, to give a simple example, you and me both can buy Tethoscope. We can go to a pharmacy shop at it. But what do you hear? And post hearing how you interpret it. Basically, that is our biggest IB. That's, you made that easier. Exactly. And yeah. till today, we are the pioneers in that. Okay, so so you made diagnosing the problem easier. Absolutely. So now it becomes more time efficient. And I, if I'm not wrong, it's more cost efficient. 100%, there's no breaking. So the biggest value addition that we give to our client is that we come to your house. Yeah. There's no breaking. No breaking. So your cost of breaking gets eliminated. Cost of redoing gets eliminated. And you don't have to break the entire bathroom. Now you're only pinpointing it and resolving that one issue. Okay. Before this or even today, the conventional method is you break the entire bathroom just to figure out where the leakage was. Exactly. And even after fixing it or maybe you break it and even after redoing it, the leakage still appears. It's on probability. So the industry was on probability. Where we changed the whole ballgame and introduced technology in probability and now is just like purely just you know. It's 100% probability. And so you know exactly where the leakage is coming from. Don't have to repeat this process every year. No, absolutely not. Exactly. Like, in Bombay, say for example, infrastructure is deteriorating, you know, environmental wise and everything, you know, there are a lot of factors that creates leakages in an infrastructure. You know, when an infrastructure gets old, when there's a lot of heat, expansion, when it's cold, contraction, rains. Bombay is like, you know, plus is near to the sea, so there's a lot of yeah. corrosion coming in and into the picture. So there are various factors that leads to leakage. Bombay is a true definition of a metropolitan city. Absolutely. And when it's a true definition of a, sorry to interrupt. No, no, it's a true definition of a city. If, if absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And so many moment, you know, there is, you know, people put sometimes it put that telephone towers and, you know, yeah, uh, connectivity and all those things. So once you penetrate anything into the existing infrastructure, which is already, you know, not in a good condition, yeah. of course, these becomes the channels for water to leak. Okay. You know, but what do people who break the entire tennis? Uh, you yeah. do the entire tennis. Whereas what we do is, we know exactly like the tire puncture where exactly is the, you know, source of leakage. So now that looks like the backward method of doing it. It looks like like primitive way of doing it. Absolutely. And you just have modernized it. Yeah. So which part of Bombay, because we're talking about Bombay, which part of Bombay do you think is needs the most amount of entire Bombay? Entire Bombay. Absolutely. There's no particular region no, like entire Bombay. Entire Bombay it yeah. does. And people who are watching this podcast, if you're from Bombay, you can relate. Maybe you or your neighbor or somebody you know definitely has leakage issues. What's the name of the company? Can you say it again? Akulka Waterproofing. Akulka Waterproofing. Okay. So, because, you know, you know the thing. Okay. You know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at advertising. So, that's that's up to you how to do it. I get really nervous. No, but no, no. For sure, if there's a leakage problem around my house, I'll definitely call you guys. Because... Done. Because... I just learned something new. Actually, I didn't even know how leakages are fixed in the first place. So you taught me how leakages are fixed. Yeah. 
but now you're teaching me how I can fix it better also. That's it. So that's the best part. Yeah. That's uh, that's not the only thing he's known for. He has an app called Do Whistle. And when I learned about this app, I am like, oh, you you um you gave you put a LinkedIn and then you put it into Google Maps and th- you practically get his app. That's practically what. Can you can you elaborate on what it exactly is all about? So we have created this global platform now. So what this global platform does is it's a map based platform. Yeah. Now it shows you the live and dynamic data of what is happening in and around you based on your location. This gives an opportunity for people, everyone from a company to an individual to broadcast themselves. Because everybody wants to broadcast themselves. There's nobody in this world that doesn't want to showcase themselves or has a skill but want to, you know, promote it or give it to the people or they want people to know about them, you know, what they're into. Now, whenever you have this kind of fan, uh, you know, when you have a scale or you have a restaurant, you have a company, you want to promote it, all the other giants ask for money. Exactly. Promote, run campaigns, run ads, all those other things. Just to put yourself out there, you have to spend so much money and time that you kind of forget why you were doing this in the first place. Because now it's all about advertising yourself and all that. You know, even after spending money, you don't get to know who, like, you know, the exact data, you know, you might be able to so you might be able to know that, okay, 100,000 people saw it, 200,000 people saw it. And it's limited. Yeah, again, limited. It's limited because, you know, like, okay, I want to show entire Maharashtra, you put a billboard, that gets taken down after a few days, you know. Absolutely. Now next what? Now what? Absolutely. But with Do Whistle, and I found this to be really, like, crazy that you, you get to choose when your location is exposed, yeah. I mean, shown, yeah, and when it's not. Absolutely. Then your contact information. It's like you have other future. Absolutely. This is your next whatever apps you're using right now. This is your super app for all the apps. It is crazy. Uh, so who came up with this idea first of the entire do whistle ideology? Who came yeah. up with this idea? So we have a whole team and it's a founders driven company. Okay. Uh, and there are people, you know, you who is who? of the industry and it's not manpower based it's not employee based so it's a founders driven company mm. so the thought came out of you know that when you when you just look for a, any brand particularly on any search engines for example that starts to you know trigger you right. maybe you would have just seen it out of curiosity right. now you're bombarded with the ads that oh I just saw it once you know you don't have to bombard me with that you don't need it right? Yeah. but that company has spent money showcasing you the ad so now that's a waste of money. Exactly, exactly. So waste of That's when the iteration comes into the picture. Why not connect people with needs and haves right where they are or while they're moving? Right. And that's how the born of, the, you know, what do you call it, the birth of Do Whistle took place. So now Do Whistle makes opportunities more direct, more personal, and more time efficient. And it's a two way communication platform. So if somebody's looking for you, you know it. So basically what you have done is you have made the entire business industry more um, efficient in terms of time, money and effort. The best part is giving people an opportunity to come out there because see we are social beings and not not many are confident that tap on the shoulders. We're sitting at the airport, we won't go and tap on the shoulder. Hey, what are you into? I'm into this, I'm into that. Exactly. No people share it. But that this is maybe the person who is sitting ahead of him. Maybe he is his client. It, it may be the person sitting there, his prospective, or, you know, client is the guy sitting behind. Yeah. You know, supply and demand is there right where you are. But this opportunity was never given by any of the platform. That is exactly where the IP of Do Whistles are. Okay. And the key is basically kill out the entire, like, oh, so what do you do? Where are you from? What's your phone number? Everything is there. This is my details. Anyone from around the world wants to contact me. This is what I do. This is what I'm here for. And the funniest part is you don't need to be like, okay, I need people to just click on your location and be like, okay, that's a doctor, that's an engineer, that's a pilot. No, there are tags. That you can. So it's only according to what you need. So it's completely need-based. Yeah, yeah, exactly completely. what you need, you get it. It's direct. And you get more of what you need, more options of what you need. So maybe what's not on Google can be there. You never know. But you never know. Whistle is there's no limit. There's no limit. So now I explain this to you. For example, you might come up with your own use case. Exactly. That's also part of the platform. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. So basically, you're all about efficiency. Yeah. Okay. And the best part is everybody gets to optimize each other's crowd. So if there's a cab company advertising, live advertising of their cabs, my cabs are available right now going from one place to another location. At the same time, there's a restaurant who's on whistle saying that, you know, 
come by lunchtime, I'll give you twenty percent off. To the life crowd who's around in that area, actual prospective customers, not somebody that you know maybe you are subscribed to one of the restaurants or something, and then you are in some other place and you hear a notification that hey, come now, I come tomorrow twenty percent off, but you'll be like, I'm not even there. Exactly. But there are people who are right outside the restaurant or in the proximity of one or two kilometers. Who would you know have not known otherwise? <laughs> Now that opportunity of reaching out to real people, real time, and without having to, you know, be dependent on someone, you as a owner can take, you know, take things in your hand and start broadcasting to people. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And now with all the businesses out there, you can only do a business if you know where you're heading, if you know a direction you want to head, right? Yeah. But let's say you're a person around my age, and you, let's say you were to meet a person around my age yeah. who doesn't know where he's headed. But he's in, I guess, junior college or in secondary high school or whatever, and he's like, I don't know what to do. I'm in twelfth. I have to choose stream to go into next year, but I don't know what to do. I go to school. I come back home. I take a shower. I sleep. I get up. Repeat. What is in it for me? What am? Where am I supposed to be headed? I have no idea. What would you advise that person? Like, what are you supposed to do with your life? How do you find meaning and what career? What path you're supposed to take because that guy has to choose college next year. Absolutely. So, what would you advise if you were to see the best part is sometimes you know there are two things. One is the education that you choose to be in, and second part is the passion that you have for things. You know, and the only way you can try to you know be happy with yourself with the choices you have taken is if you can try to combine these two things and try to create your own niche. Now, what I mean by that is maybe. You know that your passion might not have that kind of a capacity to take care of your survival. Maybe you have doubt, or maybe you are not capable enough to give you a hundred percent and try to make it big, and be ready to fail if you're not. Uh, you know, so are you willing to take that risk? Exactly. If not, you want to play a safer side. You choose, say, for example, you choose finance. You know, I'm just giving you an example. But you have a passion of, uh, you know, music. You want to become a singer. But now you know that you know singing is not the take care of your needs. You know if you don't go all in, and at the same time you know that if I have, if I study finance at least I'll have a good degree, I'll have a good job, basic things, and at least my survival wouldn't be an issue for me and my family. Exactly. You know. But now how to be happy with that? Because your heart is inclined towards your passion. Yeah. And you know responsibility says that no, you have to study, you have to get a degree to get a better job. Yeah. Okay. Now what I think in this situation is that you know create your own. Sector, create your own industry. There are people who are in the singing industry. You have a finance background or whatever background. I'm, so take engineering, combine anything, and different sectors. You know, combine sports with engineering or something. Now, how you can blend these two things and create your own identity? Because if and if you were able to crack this code, you're creating a whole niche for yourself where you you don't have a competition. Thus, you're happy with your life because you do have the degree which you wanted to have or The society wanted you to have, or out of peer pressure, you needed to have it. At the same time, now your heart is happy towards the passion, so you have just created, you know, made the zest of both and created the whole industry and solved the particular problem if there is in that industry. But for a person with no way to look, how do you, like, how how would you find a balance in your life that see I like to do this, mm-hmm. but it also caters to my um, economic needs? Yeah. How would you find that balance? See, ultimately, that thing is, as I said, it has to be with it. What kind of fire you hold within yourself? Because everything is possible. See, I gave all my life for tennis, so there's no education background that I can fall back on. Yeah. So whatever business I'm into, I don't have an IT degree. That you know, Visal is an IT. It's a tech platform. You know, it's a tech company. I don't have an IT degree. We have multiple other businesses based on the Visal platform, which is into logistics, which is into finance, which is into you know, gaps, X, Y, Z. You know, it's a limitless app. Now I never had my family business was never into logistics, but now I have knowledge in logistics. You know, if the tech is all about tech, so now I know few things about the tech. I know few things about the pharma. I know few things about waterproofing. You know, I'm not a civil engineer, for example. But it was always the fire of you know the curiosity. If you stay curious, you know, like you are, for example. You know, you're only you're sixteen years old. You're doing podcasts. You're asking these questions, and you're excited about you know meeting new people. You know, you're curious. Your curiosity is generating knowledge for you. And that is what is you know making who you are, shaping who you are today, you know. And that's when you you find the you know path and move forward. And of course, you know, beyond us there's nature. Yeah, who's guiding us? I'm 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 completely into I I'm 
a spiritual guy, you know, I love, I, I like, I love to, you know, be, be connected to the roots and always know that there's, you know, the nature of the universe working for me. Right. So when you feel helpless, you know, that time you can just, uh, you know, tell, surrender yourself. Surrender yourself. That's, that's called, that's, that's what he means by going with the flow, right? Absolutely. But do you think going with the flow might be a, maybe might not help you or like, because some people are like, some resistance is needed, right? To make things go your way. Why not make things go your way? Why go with the flow? Like when I say go with the flow, what I'm trying to say here is that accept how things are. Within your control, whatever that is. Control or uncontrolled. Accept it because only when you accept it. Because now, see what happens if you don't accept things, you're fighting. Yeah. And now you know you have no control over changing the circumstances you are in, whether by yourself or whether because of the society, whether it's because of the universe. So that thing is not in your control. So accepting gives you that mindset of now I'm going to get out of this. Yeah. So that is being with the flow, what my ideology is behind going with the flow. Okay. No resistance. Okay. Accept it because when you accept it, okay, these are the negative things. Say for example, when you accept negative things only when you accept negative things you try to find solution and go towards the positive you know I'm not saying that's not that's not that's not my go with the flow yeah you know that's like you know being completely ignored that's just being lazy that's just being lazy <laughs> and not taking you know step for yourself and say Yaar, ye to aise tha, you know yeah. accept it only when you accept it you find path and have that fire that I'm gonna change it I cannot see myself in that situation. But when that comes, when you accept. You know, and when you just, you know, enough. You know, that is acceptance. Okay. So, so you will say ignorance is bliss. I would say acceptance is bliss. Except because now you accept. You're not you ignoring it. You're um, accepting it. You're acknowledging it, yeah. but you're accepting it. Yeah. That's, it that's a new motto. It takes away the whole negative zeast. You don't change or you don't blame anymore. Yeah. This, exactly. is, this is because of this. This is because of that. Aisa hai, aisa hai. Aisa hai. Now you have to, now you have to find a way. But you, you find a way while accepting it. Absolutely. So it, you are at mental peace. Yeah. Because now but you, your cells, your body, the nature, everybody is working on finding out the way. And not creating, you know, kuch bhi hua doubt hai. Koi to hai bolne wala. Nek kiske upar gusha nikal diya. Now you've accepted, but no, I want to get out of it tough. So things become less troublesome for you and your life becomes less miserable while being a more productive person. Absolutely, because by default you have to become productive because you've accepted. You're not happy. Exactly. So now you have to keep doing iterations within yourself. Right. Whether it's writing right. up time, whether it's go get things done, whether you're deciding to go to gym every day, whether it's pursuing your passion, whatever it is, accept it, become that thing. And by default, the strength within you will start to grow and you will see yourself which you never thought you would. And you have applied all of that to your personal life and your business life as well. And I think you're practically, you're practically traveling 90% of the time. Absolutely. So, but you are still a pretty family-oriented person from what I've observed. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you get that balance? Like, I'm so, I'm pretty busy, but I'm still a family person I'm still spending a lot of time what's the balance how do you find that balance in your lives see it's all about love when you love doing something and when you have decided that you know it's about sincerity you have to be sincere you have to be honest with yourself you know so I know I have a family so I'm definitely never gonna like you know overlook that exactly so I know the responsibility I have for my work or for myself same responsibility I have towards my family you know, and when you take that responsibility, when you accept that responsibility, you give yourself up. You know, and you become I have to do it. You know, because would you would you would you when you know that you you have an opportunity to make millions of dollars, are you gonna waste that opportunity? You know. Right? Yeah. What kind of efforts you would put in? You would go left, right, center, you know, for that one podcast with this guy. Exactly. Is exactly. that well, you ain't gonna give that up? No. Exactly. Have been the same mindset towards family. It's all about what you have. What is the thought where people think, no, no, I'm busy work. No, no, he's right. He is busy. That's why he's not able to give time to the family. No, but why is this stereotype? Exactly. They are equally important. Yeah. You know, so you have to, you know, how you have become yourself, you know, how you have, this is my work. I'm going to go 24 days, that, that. Boss, same fire, same love put here. So situational prioritizing. Absolutely. Depending on the situation, you see what's more important right now. 
yes, I could probably lose fifty thousand rupees, but my wife's in the hospital. I better go there. Absolutely, yeah. situational, and it's all about the type of person you are. So you love your business, love your work, yeah. love what you do, but don't love it more than what matters more. That's at the end of the day, family, right? Always understanding the fine line between overlooking things which should not be overlooked. Exactly, and then having that comfort in mind. Yeah, me to unke liye karo. Exactly. Never have that. So if it's like, then you can also sometimes have your work over your family. Like if your son wants a new phone, I mean you don't have a son yet, but I'm just saying for <laughs> businessman, <laughs> wants to buy his son a new phone because he passed his board exam with flying colors, but he also has a million dollar deal to do. I'm pretty sure putting off that phone buying thing by another day wouldn't hurt much, right? Because the business is much more important. You can always organize things. Exactly. Always... See the thing is, what. Is your thought process? What do you want to do? Because if you decide you want to do certain things, you can do two things at the same time also. You know, it's all about whether you want to do it or not. What matters more? What matters more? You know, and and when do you think giving excuses? Hey, I go to summer journey. You know, but do you want to always keep that? Do you want to have that mindset? What if when summer day when I miss it, no, you do it. Do you do it? Exactly. So always give your hundred percent for everyone. वो तो समझ जाएंगे वाला एटीट्यूड काइंड ऑफ रूम्स योर रिलेशनशिप विद योर फैमिली मेंबर्स कि देखो समझ जाओ कि आई हैव टू गो नाउ यू नो आई दस नॉट रियली मच आई कैन डू एंड देन हैव लाइक अ लीनियंसी टूवर्ड्स या नाउ आई नो आई ऑलवेज आई प्रायोरिटाइज यू बट नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ दिस आई कॉन्ट प्रायोरिटाइज यू फैन टू लाइक एग्जाम्पल मैन यू एन न्यू रिलेशनशिप विद सम वर्ड राइट राइट वट कैन आई डू फॉर हिम वट कैन आई डू फॉर हर वट कैन आई डू फॉर यू नो ऑल दस टू डे दिस टू बिग दैट ऑल दैट वाई डज इट गिट फेड अवे लेट नॉट इट्स आर क्लियर कीप दैट सेम स्मार्क एवरी डे नो वे स्टॉप डू and keep the north star on why am i with my particular partner for a reason right because that's how we are absolutely so keep it on just because now she's officially yours and now he's officially yours now i can he's always going to be there now there's no that 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 and that happens uh, it happens because uh, people are dating but you know she can leave the relationship anytime so you were like i need to give her all my into put on the perfume and i need to buy her this and take her to a nice restaurant okay that's not important you don't have to take her to a nice restaurant don't waste your money if you don't want to but yeah there's always that you don't you can't be lenient with the girlfriend but then some people once they get married they're like to ghar pe hai na abhi ab now what is left no jaane do that shouldn't be the case treat your wife treat like you would treat your girlfriend absolutely have the same amount of passion and fire towards your family and i think uh, very few people are able to do that but I, it's lovely to see your family who is also very accommodating you know okay. i mean it's nice to see and everyone should do that like you should find you should prioritize things based on the situation while knowing keeping in mind like what's important to do no because ultimately whether you have what you want to do whether you have billions of dollars if you don't have anybody to spend with this is it worth it is it worth it in the first place and then even if you have say not billions but millions but you have your family with you You know, and that's all counts. That's that that will take over the other billions of dollars you could have owned, right? So at least you don't ruin your family. And after a certain amount, you know, life is equal for a lot of people. Exactly, exactly. So, before closing of this episode, I have two important questions to ask you. For, wait a minute. Yeah, two important questions to ask you. First of all, again, a very cliche question, but I really want to know what keeps you humble. to give a simple example as i the towers could be or a building could be the stronger the foundation it has to be because so the real strength lies in that bottom you know at the bottom only when you are strong at the bottom you can rise up exactly you know more the roots you know are scattered you know starts out the strong the tree is and it can go high that's the always the key you know and what and and what is the you know even an advantage of you know And this and that and this, you know, more law, more acceptable. People accept it, and you don't have reservations towards opening up to them. Exactly. And then people don't hold reservations towards opening up to you, so you always keep yourself open. And I always believe that you're always starting, no matter what you have achieved. You're always starting. So you're always new. So what if it was my new company? Hey, I would go meet sir. I'm coming. This, that, ye, wo, same thing. I would call everybody sir. And I would book. Exactly. Oh, same thing, correct? That's what we do. Yeah, never change that because only by doing that you reach here. So why are you changing your foundations? Right, exactly. If you want to, especially for engineering students or someone who like around the exam, the last month near the exam, you're like study, study, study. Into you about making your project this, that, and everything. Yeah, right, right. The loyalty. Loyalty. Why change that loyalty? Why change 
Why does the loyalty increase near when you get closer to the due date? Why not keep that loyalty throughout the entire year? Absolutely, absolutely. So that's one thing that you have to keep in mind. But people forget that, and that's how they end up failing their exams or whatever. Exams isn't the life, but sure, if you want to apply that ideology, you that's the best thing to apply. Yeah, staying grounded. Yeah. Staying grounded. Remember where you came from. Exactly. And more the foundation stronger, the more opportunities to grow higher and higher and higher and higher. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. And that was really refreshing to hear. It's nice to have someone to keep telling you that and giving you um, new ideologies to follow. Like when I was talking to him before the interview and all that, there are plenty of things I learned, right, from you that, and again, many of them were like, never give up, never give up. Absolutely. But you also now told me how I applied to my life. So it's not just giving you fake ideologies, but you're also telling me that's mentorship. Right? So, <laughs> is you being kind? Uh, well, well, I, I, I consider the person who helps me uh, make my life a better place a mentor. So you would be my newest mentor. Right. And I would love to <laughs> keep it. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't know that. <laughs> but... Um, Coming down to our last question, and I think I should have asked this before the humble part, but what is what does a typical day in your life look like? Because you told you some surprising timings, like when you wake up and all that, when you sleep, that kind of shocked me about how you have time to even like work when you sleep only like three hours. So what does it is when, like, you know, first of all, when you're growing up, you have early morning schools. So you kind of habit of getting up early. Right. And when you're pursuing a sport, you know, you have to get up. And my academy was always one hour you know, far from where I used to stay and the training used to start at 7. And I've given all my life to tennis. So getting up at 5 was mandatory because I'm a guy without taking, without getting completely ready, praying, I won't step out of the house. And, you know, so it was never like, and just got the back and left. Even I know I'm going to sweat, I'm going to take shower, I still have to take shower and only step out of the house. You know, so always that parameter was always there, like getting up early. Then I wanted to get up more early because then I dwelt more into spirituality and, you know, everything. Then when I understood few things, then let's try to get up at four. So there was a period in time that when I started getting up at four, you know, but then, you know, as you having multiple companies across different time zones, different countries, you have to respect that also. You have to respect your own body also. It's not you're getting up for the sake of getting up. You know? <laughs> the discipline is needed somehow. But I cannot be finishing my US calls at 2 or 3 in the morning and then get up at 4. Well, so that's that's those moments you do give yourself some leniency. So you know that's always a part and parcel of what your deal looks like next, what your deal looks like now. And then accordingly find the best you know custom tailor-made solution for yourself where your body also adapts. Your body doesn't you know deteriorate in terms of health. And at the same time you're ready for the next day. You know, so finding that fine tune. So say, for example, a normal day would be an early morning, get out, get the breakfast done. If I have time to go to the gym, might work out at the gym. Or if I know I really don't have time, but do get my workout done at home, basically. And that's persistence. That's persistence, right? And overall, consistency is another thing that's a part of your daily schedule. And just following a common goal that you have yes, and that's what keeps up meetings you have to know the cause you know waterproofing business you know I have to go to the site it's, it's not a day's job so I, I meet new people you know and business is about how you keep yourself you know so exercising keeps your mind fresh your body looks fit you, you've played tennis so the body keeps in the shape so you maintain that you know so that reflects to the person on the outside that you know that that already so you as, as you know a lot of people say first impression is the last because so these are the qualities by default becomes a byproduct of you know and then things start matching oh your business profile or your terrorist background and everything and when they look at you it just makes sense yeah you know yeah all those other things that's it it all adds up and um because of your crazy schedule right waking up at four and sometimes even going to sleep at 12 one and then having to wake up because of the time zones of this that's another example of situational prioritizing. Absolutely, absolutely. You need to see what's correct at that point. Don't say like, fa like, yeah, work is more important, but sometimes family should be more important. Absolutely. It's all about what situation you're in. That's what makes you a dynamic person. You need to... Yeah, you have to adopt. It's never, it's never standard. It's just the mindset is... Exactly. You know, this is morning, this is night, this is evening, this... Of course, these are good. These are parameters, you know. But you have to make those parameters work for you and you for them. See, it's a two-way relationship. You and the nature, nature and you. Yeah. It's always like that. So you have to find the best for yourself. But you're also happy with yourself. So your output would be good to the people. 
and vice versa. If your output is good, if your intentions are good, you are like the world is. Yeah. And by default, your energy speaks like that to the other person. So that radius comes into the picture. So the acceptability of the person comes into the picture. Definitely. And then, you know, things open up and then, you know, win-win. Definitely. So what do you advise like for a person to be better maybe in a business or to be better in school? Would you advise them to go and at least choose one sport to play that would inculcate the discipline? Is that, how do you think that would help a person? Like, Whether it's an individual sport or team sport, be part of any sports. It it builds your character. 100%. 100%. It builds your character and especially depending on the sport, it, it's different thing. Like chess teaches you to work on your intellectual abilities. Every sport. Yeah. And and, and that that's one very thing. Like decision making is what you learn in sports. If you're playing a crazy, completely full blown out sport like um, soccer or football as they say it in many countries, right? Or if you're playing um, tennis or something like that. I... I yeah, and if so, things like football and cricket, they teach you communication, communication you know, teamwork, you know, you know, accepting, even if somebody is at fault, not to outburst on it. It automatically just comes to you. That, that. Like, I'm currently going to football classes and I've seen multiple changes in my personality. I'm accepting things more often. If I'm failing in something, okay, I'm failing, but I'm going to accept it and I'm going to move on. That makes me a less, that makes me a less toxic person to be around, honestly. <laughs> I used to be panicked about practically everything, but then once again, you need just one thing to follow. Like you need to be like, you know, accept it, accept it. Yeah, I know, I know, everything is going crazy, but accept it. Right. And it's difficult, but uh, if you just do it once and you see how good your life turns out to be, you would like to apply that again and again. Am I right? Absolutely. Acceptance is bliss. Not in, not ignorance. Not ignorance. Ignorance makes you a, a irresponsible person. No, your energy goes into fighting something which you cannot change. Yeah, exactly. Right? So why put... Anyways, anyways the same energy is going to get, uh, you know, like what it used. Yeah. So might as well use it for the productivity which works for you and actually changes that <laughs> right. you're not happy about. And I mean, obviously, don't ignore something that's clearly going south, you know. Yeah. Accept it and fix what you can. It's about what is in your control. You give your side, but... That's it, that's it. If control is outside, if the building is falling, so you can't, no, if you're a builder, you can't do anything. That's naturally, good. don't go crazy on it. And your next building makes it. It's, it's your life. It's your life, you know. Take your time, accept things, but don't ignore them. Don't ignore that. And um, you know what? I've, I've never really seen tennis play into business and then business play into life. I've never, se- I, mean, I was always heard like, yeah, sports builds character, sports makes you better. But you're a, a materialized real life example of that. And after talking to you, I'm like, oh, that's actually possible. It's actually possible to... This part, the best part is, regardless, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. So anyone, you know, just don't limit yourself. You might have one background into one thing. Maybe not. Maybe yes. But keep yourself open to the nature. Keep talking, you know, what, what's stopping you? I can understand you may be one person, you know. But in this thing, it takes a matter of time from becoming A to B. Exactly. You know, so keep yourself open. And the opportunities will come. You know, what are you radiating makes a lot of difference. You know, you're radiating negativity, then how how you see yourself, your life changing. It will never happen. But you keep yourself open to possibilities and not be judgmental. Take it, let's meet. And that's all up to you. That's all up to the person doing it. And nobody can take that away from you. Your personal life reflects your business life and your business life reflects your personal life. So it's important to keep both of them sorted out and situational prioritizing. I mean, that's that's another thing I learned from you. That depending on the situation, prioritize things, yeah. but don't. You know what I mean? Don't ruin. How do I say this? Don't ruin it for you. Don't ruin it for yourself. That. Don't ruin it for yourself. I, and I mean, yeah. I mean, it's been. I don't know how long it's been, but what I heard, it's provided a lot of value to me, and hopefully, it's provided a lot of value for you guys, right? And this is yeah. We got me Rakun here sitting, and <laughs> and hopefully, he's made your life more valuable. You know? No, you no, seriously. You can spin up pleasure into you. You can spin up pleasure. Thank you so much for corresponding with everything and agreeing with the timings and everything. It's been great pleasure having you on the show. You're probably going to be one of my best guests. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. 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 Pleasure.